welcome to Burnley. Burnley is a northern town in Lancashire, UK, and is 21 miles north of Manchester and 20 miles east of Preston. And it lies at the confluence of the River Calder and the River Brun. The toponymy of the name Burnley is derived from Brun Lee, meaning meadow by the River Brun, and the River Brun is Britain's shortest river. Over the centuries, the town has had many different iterations of its name being spelled differently, and it's been known as Brunley, Brunley, and Brumley. Sir Ian McKellen, the actor who played Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit movies, was born in Burnley General Hospital and lived at a house on Scott Park Road. And England's fast bowling cricketer, Jimmy James Anderson, is also from Burnley and is the world's leading fast bowler with over 600 test wickets. He played for Burnley Cricket Club from an early age. The first mention of a settlement in Burnley was after the Norman conquest of England. In 1122, a charter was granted to the Church of Burnley to the monks of Pontefract Abbey. In its early days, Burnley was a small farming community, gaining a corn mill in 1290 and a market in 1294 and a fulling mill in 1296. And at this point, Burnley was in the manor of Iton Hill, one of the five that made up the honour of Clitheroe, which was then a far more significant settlement and consisted of no more than 50 families. Little survives of early Burnley, apart from the Market Cross, which was erected in 1295 and now stands in the grounds of the old grammar school. Over the next three centuries, Burnley grew to the size of about 1,200 inhabitants, and by 1550, it was still centred around the church St Peter's, what is now known as Top of the Town. Prosperous residents built larger houses, including Gawthorpe Hall in Paddyham, which was owned by the Shuttleworth family, and was visited by the famous author Charlotte Bronte. And Townley Hall, which was built by the Townley family, but is now owned by the Borough Council and looked after as part of Townley Park. We visited Gawthorpe Hall last year, and it's a magnificent, beautiful, historic building. And you can see that video on our channel. In the 1700s, weaving became established in the town and by the year 1790, the population had grown to around 2,000 people. In the second half of the 18th century, the manufacture of cotton began to replace wool. Burnley's earliest known factories, dating from around 1750, stood on the banks of the River Calder, close to where it is joined by the River Brun and they relied on water power to drive the spinning machines. Burnley was badly affected by the cotton famine of 1861 to 1865. This was caused by the American Civil War and it also affected many other northern towns which relied on cotton manufacture. The 1700s also saw the rapid development of coal mining on the Burnley coal field. The drift mines and shallow bell pits of earlier centuries were replaced by much deeper shafts, meeting the industrial as well as the domestic demand in Nelson Coal and Paddyham, and by 1800 there were over a dozen pits in the modern day town centre. Working in the coal mines was a dangerous profession, and over the years 327 men and boys lost their lives in the Burnley area, and a memorial has been made to commemorate their lives. Burnley MP Mr Higginbottom was at the opening ceremony and he said it was a privilege to be present at the unveiling of the Miners Memorial, which is outside the library. He said he wanted to congratulate the Burnley Miners Memorial Wall Committee and everybody involved for organising the fitting tribute. The worst of the coal mining disasters happened as recently as March 1962 where an explosion deep underground 
killed 16 men instantly and another three seriously injured men died in hospital. The official report stated that the explosion was likely caused by a fire damp ignition, possibly combined with coal dust. Fire damp was a name given to the dangerous gases which built up inside the mines. In the year 1796, the Leeds to Liverpool Canal made possible the transportation of goods in bulk, bringing a huge boost to the economy of the town of Burnley. Dozens of new mills were constructed, along with many foundries and ironworks that supplied the cotton mills and coal mines with machinery. In the year 1820, a permanent military presence was established in the town with the opening of Burnley Barracks. In 1848, the East Lancashire Railway Company's extension from Accrington linked the town to the nation's national railway network for the first time. This was a significant boost for the local economy and by 1851 the town's population had reached 21,000. This shop is very famous in the local area for its pies. The pork pies there are probably the best I've ever tasted, so if you're ever in the area, treat yourself to one. The town is also fanatical about its football club, Burnley FC. This is one of the oldest clubs in existence, founded in May 1882 and was one of the founding 12 teams in the Football League in 1888-89 and Burnley are currently in the Premier League having won promotion from the Championship in the 22-23 season. The team have played their home games at Turf Moor since February 1883 which replaced their original premises at Calder Vale. The Turf Moor site has been used for sport since at least 1843 when Burnley Cricket Club moved to the area. And in 1883, they invited Burnley to a field adjacent to the cricket pitch. Both clubs have remained there ever since, and only their Lancashire rivals, Preston North End, have continuously occupied their stadium for longer at Deepdale. As we conclude this journey through Burnley's rich history, may the echoes of the past continue to inspire and resonate reminding us of the enduring spirits that has shaped this remarkable town.